Alright, today we're going to talk about uh, the different kind of economic goods and how we are going to use consumer theory to analyze and identify these goods. Okay, please download the mind map okay, on quickonomics.wordpress.com. Alright, so let's start first by talking about the step by step instructions okay, on how to identify okay, the good type. And the under normal inferior and given goods. All right. Step one. Okay, we are going to change the price of x. Okay, either increase the price of x or decrease the price of x. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick with the decrease part. Okay, so we're gonna decrease the price of x later. Step two. We are going to identify point C under the Hicksian definition of real income. We are going to draw a vertical line on point C. We are going to determine a change in real income, whether it has increased or decreased. Step 5, we, we, we will draw the direction of change for the good type on point C, which will be explained clearly during the video itself. Step number 6, we will now identify point B for the specific good type, whether it is normal, inferior or given. Okay, so there are only six steps, six easy steps, okay, on how uh, we're going to tackle this problem over here. Okay, so let's put this into practice. Right, um, I'll be uploading uh, a picture of this, so I hope you can go download it. Alright, let's start with step one, okay. So this is a demonstration with explanation. Alright, okay, now take a look at this. Okay, over here, I'll be using pink. Alright, uh, this is my standard setup. Alright, the initial equilibrium for consumer theory. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is we are going to decrease the price of X. Okay, the price of X is going to go down. So, what's going to happen is that, okay, this is going to rotate outwards. You should be very proficient in this. Okay. Right. Okay. So that's that's step one. Okay. Step two would be to identify point C using the Hicksian definition of real income. All right. So we're gonna do that. There we go. Point C under Hicksian definition of real income. Okay, next, draw a vertical line on point C. Alright, let's use purple for that. Okay, um, next. Determine the change in real income. Alright, so this is one portion that uh, we have not gone through in the previous videos. Okay, to identify a change in the consumer's real income, whether there's an increase or a decrease or not, we will look at two things. Number one, we will look at the new budget line. Number two, we will look at the imaginary budget line. Okay, so if the new budget line is higher than the, init than the imaginary budget line, that means there is a increase in real income. If it's the other way around, okay, the imaginary budget line is below, okay, sorry, the imaginary budget line is on top of the new budget line, that means the consumer's real income has decreased. So in this case over here, we can see that the imaginary budget line is below the new budget line, therefore this consumer's real income has increased. Okay, so it's always the imaginary to the new, imaginary to the new. Okay, remember that. Okay, so as seen from the graph, okay, we know that his real income has increased. Okay, so we now go on to step 5. Draw direction of change for the good type on point C. Okay, so uh, on this vertical line over here, okay, it separates the x-axis into two portions. Basically, this way and that way. Okay, now we know that his real income has increased. So if your real income has increased and you are buying more x, and by buying more x you are going this way, alright, it goes to show that X is a normal good. Okay, what have we learned from the from the blog post as well as the uh, mind map? We know that 
a normal good, okay, works in such a way, alright, when my income has increased, the demand for it has increased, therefore, the de quantity demanded increases this way, so that's why when we go this way, okay, that is a normal good, alright, a normal good is one that has got a positive income elasticity, okay, if, let's say now, okay, it's, it's the same thing, okay, our real income is increasing, and if we're going this way, and we're going this way, we are actually buying less X. Okay, so by going this way, while well, our real income has increased, and we're buying less X, it shows that X is an inferior good. Okay, an inferior good, okay, is one where my income increases, my demand for it falls. Okay, and it has got a negative income elasticity. Okay, so knowing this, we can mark out the following. Alright, we can go on to step 6. I'm sorry, step 5. Okay, this way, X will be a normal good. And going this way, X is going to be an inferior good. Okay, so what we mean by going this way, that way, okay, is that point B, alright, the new point B, if it lies along this side of the, of the new budget line, okay, X is a normal good. And if it lies this way, okay, it means that X is an inferior good. Okay, now, an important thing to take note, alright, can point B line here lie here? No, point B cannot lie here because if my point B line here, it goes show that the indifference curve goes like this. Okay, and that is wrong because indifference curves cannot intersect. So it has to lie somewhere around here, this region, okay, inside the indifference curve. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to step six. Alright, just a quick recap. We have done everything from step one to step five. Now step six will be to identify point B for the specific good type. Alright, now since we know that when X goes this way, it's a normal good, so if I put my point B over here, alright, that is where B is a normal good. Okay, if I put point B over here, that is where point B is an inferior good. Okay, so now where is the given good? Alright, the given good, okay, if you take a look at the uh, mind map over here, you can see that the given good Okay, not only does it violate the law of demand, okay, the income effect, okay, for a given good is also more than its substitution effect. Okay, so now, uh, that goes to show that a given good is either a very inferior good or a very normal good. Okay, um, it is difficult to see the relative distance, okay, when we talk about the normal good, but we can see it for the inferior good. Okay, so we know that, alright, um, just let me draw this vertical line on uh, point A first. <coughs> alright, we know that if we go from here to here, that is the substitution effect under the Hickson definition of real income. Okay, and if point B is here, okay, if point B is here, when we move from point C to point B, that is the income effect, okay? So we know that over here, right, just let me use a pen so that it doesn't look too obvious, all right? This would be the income effect, all right? I hope you can see that. Now, what if I bring point B somewhere here? If I bring point B somewhere here, you will realize that my income effect is larger than my substitution effect. Okay, I'm going to draw that over here. It goes all the way from this side, point C to point B over here, which is a given good. Alright, so this is my income effect. And the income effect is larger than the substitution effect. Okay, you can see initially we were X0, and we got to X1, and we were X2. The distance between the distance between x0 and x1 is smaller than the distance between x2 and x1. Okay, so that is where a given good occurs. Okay, so um, that's about it. It is that simple. Alright, we will now go on okay, to complements and substitutes. Alright, here we now have the same thing, step by step instructions on how to identify complements and gross substitutes. Okay, so step one. In change the price of X again. Okay, so similarly to the previous exercise, we are always going to decrease the price of X. Okay, um, step two. Okay, we draw a horizontal line across point A. Step three, we identify the direction of change. 
for the specific good. And this is the tricky part. Okay, but no problem. Okay, let's just put it into practice and um, I'll show you how easy it can be. Okay, so we have our initial setup again. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to decrease the price of X. Okay, so the budget constraint is going to shift out one more time. This is I not over PX1. PX1 over PY not. Alright, and step two is to draw a horizontal line across point A. Horizontal line. Okay, I, shall, I probably should have uh, draw a dotted line, but okay. Alright, so that's point A. Now, step three, identify the okay, direction of change for the specific good. Okay, now, okay, if you take a look at the new budget constraint. Okay, initially we were at point A. We had Y not amount of Y and we had X not amount of X. Okay, so if we are going downwards, okay, we're going to separate this into two again. Alright, similar to, to, to what we did previously. We're going to separate this into two, okay, on top and below. Okay, so when we go below, that means we are somewhere along this portion of the uh, indifference uh, of the new budget line. If we are going upwards, we are along this portion of the new budget line. Okay, so now if we go downwards, if you go downwards, you realize that I'm buying lesser Y. Okay, so just keep looking at this particular point right here, my pen. Look at my pen. Okay, if I'm, if I'm going downwards, I'm actually buying lesser Y. As you can see, I'm going lower on the y axis. Okay, I'm going lesser y, but I'm buying more x. So if I'm buying lesser y and I'm buying more x, it just goes to show that when I go down this way, okay, they are gross substitutes. X and y are substitutes. Okay? And naturally, if we go the other way around, we are actually complements. Okay, and uh, let's just verify this. Okay. Same thing. Take note of my pen. Okay, if we are going up this direction, okay, we are buying more Y. And up to this point, okay, where XO is, up to this point, okay, we have actually more X. So if let's say for example I'm here, okay, I have got firstly more Y and I have also more X. So I'm buying more of both. When I'm buying more of both, okay, uh, they are complements. Okay, and if you if you saw the mind map, okay, uh, there are some simple rules over here. So when the demand of X goes up, the demand of Y goes up. Okay, and if the demand of X goes down, the demand of Y goes down as well. All right, and um, for substitutes, you'll be the other way around. Okay, so that's identifying complements of substitutes. It is easy. Okay, so we move on to the last part of this. Which is the Slutsky analysis. Okay, now this is going to be um, slightly tedious, but uh, I'm not going to try. I'm not going to try. Okay, I will not say try, I will do it. Okay, so let's get this done together. Alright, so for Slutsky analysis, okay, just remember these steps, okay? I'm, I'm doing one, okay, step by step for you. Budget constraints. Okay, you must not be lazy when we are writing the notations. Indifference curve, okay, no, that's my projector. Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay, great. So now we have our initial equilibrium set up. So what we're going to do first is we're going to decrease the price of X. So this thing is going to shift outwards. Yeah, there we go. And we're going to do all the normal stuff first. Okay, we're going to come up with point C for the Hicksian definition of real income first. That's CH. Okay. And then we're going to draw the Slutsky's point C. Okay, the reason why we need uh, both, okay, is... Uh, you will find out soon. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to draw the vertical line on top of the C, point C for the Hicksian's definition of real income, okay? 
there we go. Okay, so um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna check whether the real income okay has changed or not. Okay, so we're still going, you know, using the step by step. All right, the instructions over here. So we have we have passed point, point uh, step three already. So now we need to determine the change in real income. All right, for the Sasuke analysis, it is always okay looking at the Hickson imaginary budget line and the Slutsky budget uh, imaginary budget line. Okay, so if the Slutsky one is higher than the Hickson one, all right, that means real income has changed. Okay, if the Slutsky one is lower than the Hickson one, that means uh, uh, that means sorry. Okay, let let me try that again. Okay. If the Slutsky imaginary budget line is higher than the Hicksian imaginary budget line, that means real income has increased. If the Slutsky imaginary budget line is lower than the Hicksian imaginary budget line, that means real income has dropped. So in this case, real income has increased because this is the Hickson line and this is the Slutsky line. The Hicks goes into the Slut. Okay, so um, real income has increased. Okay, so when real income has increased, okay, what we can do now is we go on to step five. Okay, we'll we we'll identify the direction of change for the particular good type. So for when we're going towards here, we know that x equals to a normal good, and we go there, x equals to an inferior good. Okay, so now we can put our point B, okay, which is here, point B. All right, if it's a normal good. Okay, here point B if it's an inferior good. Okay, so to mark out the substitution effects, okay, it's very simple. Okay, uh, this is point A. All right, from point A, okay, to point C over here under the Slutsky uh, point C, that is the Slutsky point C's substitution effect. Okay, Sus substitution effect under the Slutsky definition of real income, and it is bigger. Okay, then the uh, Hicksian's substitution effect. So from there, you can move on to from CS to B. Alright, CS to B will be the income effect under Slutsky. CH to B will be the income effect under uh, Hicksian. Okay, so <coughs> this, is, this one is a little bit confusing, uh, but I don't think you'll be encountering it much during the exam. But if you do, okay, so yeah, at least now you know. Alright, uh, it'll be good for you to practice some questions on this, and uh, yeah, just get really good at it. Alright, thank you very much.